Ariel and today we are going to talk about cognitive dissonance in psychology. So what is cognitive dissonance? Normally people would choose to perform a desirable action. However, what would happen if a person is induced to cease performing that desirable action? He will experience dissonance because not performing the action is dissonant with his cognition that the action is desirable. The feeling of dissonance doesn't feel good, so he will need to reduce the dissonance through some ways. The greater the threat of punishment, the less the dissonance, since a severe threat is consonant with ceasing to perform the action. For example, if there are two policemen carrying guns while guarding the cake, you would probably not go in to eat the cake, because the external threat is too large. But what if there is mild or no external punishment, like when you are alone in the room with no guards guarding the cake? How can the person refrain themselves from performing the desired action? In this case, people will have a greater tendency to derogate the action by persuading themselves that it is less desirable to them. In 1963, an experiment done by psychologists Aronson and Carl Smith illustrated this theory. In this experiment, children were left in the room with a variety of toys, including highly desirable toys. In this case, is the bus light here and some comparably less desirable toys, like the orange monster and the little pink pig. For the sake of this video, we have adjusted some of the details from the experiment. However, we kept the main ideas the same. The children were asked to rank their favorite toys from the first place to the third place. The experimenter then told the children that she will be away for 10 minutes and asked the children to not play with their favorite toys while she is away. And then the children were divided into two groups. The first group is called the severe punishment groups and the second group is called the mild punishment groups. This is what the experimenter would say to a group of children that is in the severe punishment groups. I don't want you to play with the bus light here, you just play it with. If you played with it, I would be really angry. But you can play with all these other toys. If you play with the bus light here, I would be so mad and I would just take all of my toys and I will go home. And I would think you as a baby. I hope you will never do that. This is what the experimenter would say to a group of children that is in the mild punishment groups. Okay, I don't want you to play with the bus light here while I am gone. If you play with it, I would be annoyed. But you can play with all these other toys. I will be back really quickly. When the experimenter came back and asked the children to rank their favorite toys again, the severe punishment group's ranking doesn't change. However, for the mild punishment groups, their favorite toys were given less in their ranking. So why does this happen? As we said earlier in the lecture, the mild punishment groups are facing weak external forces. Therefore, in order to restrict themselves from doing this desirable action, they need to change their internal cognition by persuading themselves that the bus light here is not desirable anymore.